Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. It's a beautiful evening, and we got a car to diagnose. This black one over here, a 2007 Chrysler PT Cruiser. Hmm, what's the customer complaint? Well, he says that the transmission is stuck in limp mode. He's got a check engine light on. And there's one code store to P0882. Interesting. So let's dive right in, start from scratch, take it for a spin, verify a customer complaint, get the scanner out, and uh, take this diagnosis, hopefully, to the conclusion. <laughs> See if we can fix it. No parts required, maybe, but it's a Chrysler, so yeah, I don't know. 52,000 miles. Wow, low mileage vehicle. Said an old lady owned it. Fires right up. Mm -hmm. That's good. Where's the where's the power window switches? Oh, they're up here. Uh, that works. All right, check engine lights on. Let's uh, take it for a little shimmy. Big steering wheel for a little, little beater. Is that? All right, here's drive. There's windshield's cracked. So, let me take it out on the open road and see if it shifts through the gears. All right, from a stop, we're in drive. Let's just accelerate. Definitely not shifting. <laughs> so I think it's stuck in second gear, whatever the limp strategy is. So you can cruise like 35 miles an hour, but then it gets busy. <laughs> hmm. Kind of reminds me of that neon. You can go in first and then, nobody know. Oh, we just hit a rabbit. Whoops. So I can see why the owner actually towed it from Philadelphia, which is like three hours away. It wouldn't be fun to drive in the interstate at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> so can't disappoint this guy. Let's uh, take it back to the shop, get the scanner out, and uh, pull up some service information. All right, let's hop right in. We're using the big boy, the Varus, just because for in-depth diagnostics, you can't beat the big screen and the user interface. Scanner. <clears throat> All right, let's see here, Chrysler. 2007. Auto ID. See how fast it reads the VIN. Boom. 2.4, yep. Now let's do a full code scan. Why not? Should be pretty quick. All right, and we're done. Hey, just, what, nine modules. Sweet. <laughs> P0700 in the engine control module. That just means the transmission is requesting that check engine light. And there it is, P0882 TCM power input low, just like the owner said. So if we jump right in here, 
Go right into the transmission menu. Again, verify our code. There it is. And just go right for the troubleshooter, see what information is available right on the scanner. So this is uh, one of these, front wheel drive. Code tips, P0882. All right, here it is, TCM power input low. This DTC is set when there's less than three volts present at the transmission control output circuits located in the PCM. When the transmission control system requests the power up of those circuits. Interesting, so PCM requests the power up and then something powers it up. <laughs> Due to the integration of the transmission control module and the PCM, both systems have their own power and ground circuits. Very good information. Monitor state. When the ignition is turned off, and position run, and or the ignition is turned to start, position uh, from start to run. Okay, possible causes. Tipum DTCs, apparently this thing has a tipum, or the control circuit shorted to ground, or it's open, or the PCM is bad. So, should be an interesting diagnosis. Tipum, PCM, or wiring. Obviously, we need to go find a wiring diagram and see what wires we need to check and locate these components. While we have the scanner out, what can we talk to here? We can talk to the engine, transmission, and we can talk to the TIPM centrally. It is the central gateway. Let's jump in there and see what, um, what is available. So TIPM has no code itself functional tests and data. Let's see what data we can get from this central gateway module. So here we go. Ignition switch status. Transmission relay sense. Interesting. That might be useful. Ignition start sense, start run. Ignition start. Okay, tip and fuel pump control override. There's a lot of stuff in here. We're just looking for something related to the transmission. There's Prindle status, transmission type, it knows what we have an automatic, okay. Air speed supply. So all the ignition switch. Status key in ignition, right? Okay, so the only th thing I've really seen here that could be helpful is the transmission relay sense. It says true. I'm just gonna start it up. Put it in gear. And there it says false. Key off. Key on. So that never changed. That's just some gathering some data. We don't even know the layout of the circuit yet. We're looking for clues. Now it's time to go to our service information, dig up a wiring diagram, and pull up the uh, information on this code. All right, we're in all data. First thing comes up, <laughs> one verified repair. Replace TIPM, test drove, system okay. So TIPMs on these things obviously are known to have issues. And, oh, what else is there here? Transmission in limp mode. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, service bulletin. There's a diagnosis. Mm -mm -mm. Three repairs available. Yeah, it looks like tip them, reman tip them, component location. Circuits in and out of the tip them verified good, and tip them is replaced. 
vehicle was restored tip them again wiring your connectors PCM oh suggested repair okay so this is kinda like <laughs> a very primitive identifix <clears throat> if we go to the code description gives us a wiring diagram there's the tip -em. there's the PCM and also in integrated TCM transmission control transmission control output so we have two wires out of the tip -em going to the PCM and it's spliced and there's three wires here not exactly sure what transmission control or transmission control output do but I think they're power feeds there's a fuse power feed right there through fuse 33 okay that's the only diagram we have in this section theory of operation transmission control output circuit is used to supply power to the transmission solenoid TRS assembly which keep in mind is not in that diagram and to the PCM when in normal operating mode the purpose of the transmission output circuit is to allow the transmission control system to turn off the power to the transmission solenoid TRS assembly in the event that the transmission should need to be placed into limp mode due to a DTC it's gonna fail safe it shuts off that circuit and then boom you're in whatever second gear like kind of like we are after a PCM reset ignition switch to the run position or after cranking the engine the transmission control system verifies that the transmission output circuit is open by checking for voltage on the transmission output circuits before the control system requests for the circuit to be powered up the request is sent by direct circuit control from the PCM to the TIPM interesting sent by a direct circuit control if the transmission control system des detects less than three volts when the output is commanded on the DTC will set so I think that's what this wire is for transmission control so the PCM says hey we need the TCM powered up which is integrated into here sends a positive voltage to the TIPM and the TIPM says I don't know if there's a relay in here. There might be a relay, it's just not shown. That's the way uh, Chrysler's were before the system was, uh, you know, installed. They just had transmission control relay. And then power comes through here and feeds the TCM. And also through a splice to the transmission. We'll find that diagram in a little bit. So. When monitored, set condition. So this code sets when the, the PCM slash TCM requests that the TIPM turns on that power feed. And that doesn't happen. So it's less than 3 volts. And then here's the possible causes. It doesn't say, <laughs> for some reason, it doesn't say a TCM could, or a TIPM could cause this. this is related to tip them to TCs transmission control circuit short to ground open or the PCM it doesn't say hey there could be a bad relay in the tip them you should replace the whole thing which uh, is very likely so yeah we don't really care about the uh, there's some pinouts that could be helpful but the flow chart is uh, not gonna help us that much we need a wiring diagram so Come in here, go back to vehicle. Let's go to diagrams. Now in this case, we want electrical OE. All right, let's scroll down. Let's go for either powertrain control or transmission. Powertrain management, that could be it. And yeah, transmission is not separate, so powertrain management. And here we have a whole list of diagrams. Wiring diagram index. Let's see what we have in here. Okay. So where's transmission? <laughs> There's module, sensor, swirl, throttle body. Uh 
Hmm. All kinds of sensors. AC, high pressure, 3023 maybe. And now we can try it. Sensor speed. It goes the PCM. Let me find the right diagram because this search feature isn't isn't the most helpful. Let's uh, let's try this vehicle. Go right into transmission and drivetrain. And then go into electrical interactive non OE. Yeah, well, we don't want non OE. We want OE. <laughs> Lapse indicators, automatic, transmission transaxle. Here we go. Electrical OE diagrams. Let's try that. 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, and 07. Hey, there's a tip -um. There's a transmission control output. We're on the right track. And check that out. It goes to three wires at the PCM slash TCM. And then from that splice, like we thought, goes to the assembly transmission solenoid pressure switch. Excellent. So that is our diagram. We can see the next one. I wish they were just all in one file. And PCM transmission. Transmission range sensor, temperature sensor, okay. Ah, here's from the splice. It feeds, indeed, these pressure switches. Perfect. How do they work? So those are sense wires at the PCM. And the feed is here, so when that switch closes, see that's a ground right there, the sense wire gets pulled to ground. If the switch is open, the sense wire will be high, you know, going through a resistor, but still high voltage. So that's what the feed is to our transmission solenoid pressure switch assembly. Okay. Let's keep going here. Aha! There's the same power feed and it goes to our solenoids, which are then ground side switched by the PCM. Okay, excellent. So that power feed is key. If we're missing it, then transmission is like, hey, limp home and no bueno. And last one. This is for auto stick. We don't we don't have that. That was the fancy model. All right. So let's go back. How do we go back diagrams? This should be a little easier. Previous diagram. So that one. Previous diagram again. Those are the pressure switches. Previous diagram again. And one more. See, what does this do? This is this is the uh, the range sensor again, right to the PCM. And this should be it. So this guy. At the tip -um, we have transmission control, transmission control output. And we have from the PCM, so that's in, and then this thing sends power out. So we can either do our checks at the PCM or at the tip -um, whichever one's easier to get to. Or at this connector C102. There's a light green wire, turns into a yellow and brown at the connector. And yellow and orange, it turns into a red. And again, yellow, orange, and that's red too. So this diagram is key. Let's uh, open it in a separate window. We can even print it out and then uh, attack this car. Alrighty, we got our diagram printed out. 
At the PCM, we're looking for this wire right here, C4 pin 18, light green, C4 pin 38, yellow and orange. We can also check you know, either one of these, pin 19, pin 28, two red wires and yellow orange wire. They should all be tied together. They're all sense or feed wires. At the tip them, we have C2, pin 10, C10, pin 3. Whichever one's easier to get to. Or, at this connector, you can get to those wires. So, let's jump under the hood, see what we can access. Finally, getting to the car, after all the research. <laughs> one thing I like about the PT Cruiser, it fits in my garage really well. Plenty of working room. But, the hood is like a triangle. So everything's really crammed in here. Here's the PCM. Four connectors. That's our guy. That's C4. Usually they go in order this way. Then our tip them is right down here. A little more buried. So I say we pop this cover off, off this connector, without breaking the tabs, of course. And then do our checks. Alright, here we go. Blew off all the dust, sprayed a little WD-40 on here for the to facilitate. See how easy that red tab moved over? And boom, we're off. <laughs> Too easy. Now should unwrap some of this tape. You can see where it starts. I'm just gonna peel this sucker back. I know Eric would whip out his blade and cut right through the tape, but we'll just do it the slow way, I guess. Aha, we got wires. Now Chrysler does use pretty nice beefy wires, and the insulation doesn't seem to go bad on them. Well, not as bad as some other cars. Some cars use tiny, really small gauge wires, and they just don't hold up. All right, so these clips, again, very careful. You know, they, uh, sometimes I like to use a pick on here. You slide this plastic connector off. Try not to damage the plastic clips. Ah, broke one, damn. Last time, Last Chrysler I did, I actually got the connector off without damaging any of these really delicate tabs. Sometimes you just kind of pry under it and try to slide the connector back. I can't see what I'm doing here. Why they use this design it is the flimsiest connector cover design ever. Ah, yes. Got it. Okay. Our pins are nicely labeled. So at the PCM, I'm looking for. C418 and C438. Okay. 18 and 38. Okay, 38 is a yellow and orange. That fits. And 18, yes, it is a light green. Perfect. We got our wires. You can take this yellow and orange out of here. Wherever it wants to go. Yellow and orange, gotcha. Okay. Perfect. So, here are the two wires. Light green, yellow and orange. I'm gonna put my Pico scope on here. Two channels 
Turn the key on and see if the command is there from the PCM and what comes back from the tipum. And then we'll make the, uh, the call, which way to go. Alrighty, we've got some leads hooked up. Very simple. Channel 1, blue lead, is the transmission control wire. So from the PCM going to the tipum, requesting that that internal relay switch on. That's this guy right here. Channel 2, red lead, is on the yellow and red wire, which is this transmission control output. So that's from the tipum. We should get a feed there as soon as this wire goes high. Let's see what happens when we turn the key on. The loudest dinger ever. All right, so two channels. They're both at zero right now. Key's off. Turning the key on, and boom. Nothing. Key off, key on. No start. <laughs> what the heck? Key out, key in, key on. There we go. What the heck? It's a no crank, no start. What did I do? <laughs> uh, well, we got, we got feed. Relay turns on. Let's try again. Key out. Relay turns off. The feed turns off. As expected. Key on. On and on. So that tells me there's definitely a relay inside the tipum. It's not like a transistor driver or something it's fancy. Why do we have a no crank? Hmm. Let's get our scanner out. What is going on with this thing? I didn't, I didn't touch anything. Engine. Codes only. Piece 0700. Let's see here. Transmission. I don't know. I'm just going to clear the codes. Transmission range sensor rationality stored. Uh oh. Is that why it doesn't want to crank? It doesn't know if it's in neutral or Prindle is like lit up like a Christmas tree. I plugged the TCM back in. That's, that's probably why it's not starting. It doesn't know if it's in park or neutral. Clear codes. Yes. Continue. Okay. Our Prindle came back. Very interesting. Maybe I unplugged the PCM with the key like in and it still wanted to sense a circuit? I don't know. No codes present. We got our Prindle back. So let's try again. Key off. Relays off. Key on. Ah, I don't like that. That's bad. That is bad. Look at that. Our output dropped and then the control switched off. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. We caught the problem in the act. This is the money shot. This is why you need a scope. Beautiful. So the PCM is commanding the relay on. It's not losing the control. However, from the tipum, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> we're losing it. Finally, the output shuts off and then the PCM is like, well, we're requesting it, we're not getting it, so we're going to shut the control off and put it in limp mode. That right there is your problem. So it does look like right now at this point it's a problem with the tipum. It's not a connection issue because, you know, we don't have like a dirty or somewhere in between it's either on or off that relay is trying to stay on but uh it can't it just can't stay on finally maybe it warms up a little bit and pff, completely shuts off so right now if we were to fire the parts cannon we need to tip them so the diagnosis and the check 
was much faster than doing the research. Keep that in mind. But we knew exactly what wires to test. We knew exactly what we we're looking for. And the proof is right there in the waveform. L literally took a few seconds. So what's the next step? We've got to get to this tip them. <laughs> you can check the wires there just to make sure we get the same uh, faulty output. And then if it's a relay problem, you know, we're sending the control, we're not losing the control from the PCM, but this relay is crapping out. Could we replace just that relay for the transmission? That might be a possibility if we can get this thing apart. So, I don't know, let's, uh, let's tear this thing out and see where it goes. Alrighty, air box is off. Here's our tip -em. It's like a fancy fuse box that can talk. <laughs> Actually, pretty easy to pop out of here, kind of like Legos. We've got all these connectors. All these connectors. So now we need to find A, which connectors are going to the PCM, you know, these two wires here. How do they get to here? And then we can unplug the whole thing and snap it apart and see if we can trace the pins to a relay and check it on the bench. So, let's see, module, totally integrated power. We are looking for C2, pin 10, and C10, pin 3. All right, let's go. These are the connector views, C1, all right, there's C10, so C10 is an 8 pin, we're, we're looking for pin 3, which is transmission control output, yellow and orange. They don't tell you where these connectors are. They just says pin, you know, 8 pins. Here's what it looks like. So we can write down C10, 8 pin. And by sequencing, you see pin 3 is... Our guy, yellow and, or and orange, so pin three, yellow, orange, and one, two, and four are empty, so that shouldn't be too hard to find. One, two, and four are empty, so that guy on an eight pin connector, yellow and orange. Next one is C2 pin 10. Let's see here, there's C11. All right, C2, 14 pin, doesn't, doesn't tell you the color. So C2, 14 pin, we are looking for pin number 10. Transmission control, yellow and brown. Pin 10, yellow, brown. This is trans control. Is that right? That's from the PCM to tip them. So this is to tip them. This is trans output to PCM. Let's go find these wires, see where they go. All right, looking at our connectors. First one's easy to find. Eight pin, there's the yellow and orange, that goes to our PCM or TCM to power it up. That's the output from the TIPM fat wire and it's the only wire in that row. So one connector is right there. That's our C10 pin 3. Now the other one, C2 pin 10, yellow and brown, that would be this guy right here, yellow and brown. That's the 14 pin, small, you know, smaller wires. That's from the PCM to the TIPM telling us, hey, turn on that relay to power up this yellow and orange. So now that we know that, we can unplug everything, do a visual inspection, obviously, and tear this thing apart, see what happens. What we could do is put our leads on these two wires right here, you know, turn the vehicle on, see if 
we get the same exact waveform on the Pico. We could do that for, you know, to be 100% before we tear this thing apart. All right, so right now, we're measuring those two wires at the, at the tip them now, not at the PCM. So same two wires. Get the scope rolling. We'll see what happens. All right, and key on. Start the engine. Okay, so far so good. Control is on and the tip is doing its thing. Maybe because we flipped it over. So right now it's not setting a code. It shouldn't be. Let's go to our scanner. Transmission. Codes. TCM power input low pending. That was from last time. Let's clear that guy out. Clear codes. Yes. Continue. Codes, no codes present. Okay. So, already doing better than last time. Cycle the key off. All right. Control and output go low. Key on. Alright, so far so good. Do we fix it? Go back, engine, clear that check engine light. Now our IAT is unplugged. Okay, well, not worried about that. So far so good. Can we make it act up again? Let's bring the scope out there and play around with the tip them, kind of tap it and see if we can lose that output. So, there's our scope, we're, we're good right now. Let's wiggle some wires around. I mean, just by disturbing this thing, we potentially could have fixed a connection. We could try, you know, turning it back around, putting it back in its happy spot. Oh, there it goes. Nice. We recreated the problem. What's the problem? <laughs> See, we lost output there for a second. Just by putting it in this position. This is beautiful. I'm gonna touch some wires. See that? I pushed it like that. No, no wiggle. Oh, there it goes. Low and then boom. Fail safe mode. We got it to act up. Interesting. I'm gonna try just shutting it off. Turning the key back on. Our output's still low. So we have to reset the PCM. Let's see here. Take the key out. Put the key back on on. I should. Okay, there we go. We lost it for a bit and came back. Let's do a little tap test. Oh, there it goes. Not happy. <laughs> Not happy at all. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, there it goes. Lost it. Came back. So I don't hear a relay clicking. Oh, now we're in fail safe again. So let's do one thing. Shut the car down. Unplug that connector. I don't think it's gonna be a connector or wiring problem because a light tap like that, not gonna affect too much. But we can still un unplug it, plug it back in. Sometimes you get lucky. Okay, something interesting just happened. 
trying to get to the gray connector, I unplugged this big connector with the big lock tab, pulled on it, and the gray connector came out without any resistance. What the heck? <laughs> Was it not clipped in all the way? Great question. Let's see if it can clip in all the way. So if it was just sitting here, and if it's clipped in all the way, there's no way that could have pulled out. Let's just put it back in, do our test again. We're already here. Clip, clip, clip. Put our leads back on, which are right here. So blue is our control, red is our output. Put it back in its location. Focus you guys on the scope. You see those lines? Let me tilt it this way. Oh, come on. Oh no, now my USB cable is busting at me. All right, you guys can see those traces. Key on. Okay, so we're on command and output. Try the tap test. Ah, it's still doing it. A little tap test. Not good. So no, it was not a bad connector. However, we're at the problem for sure. Now we're on again. I'm wiggling this wire. No change. Tap test. Yes, there is a change. On and off. Wiggle the control wire. Oh. Come on. Wake up. <laughs> it's down again. Oh, now we're in limp. Ah, I'm just trying to narrow down by tapping different places. Be 100%, we're not dealing with a connector problem. So I did the same thing with connector number two, the control. Unplugged it, plugged it back in. Just to make sure those pins, you know, they all look clean, but you never know. First thing you do, we narrowed down the problem to here. Disturb the connectors, plug them back in. Right now we're on, but we see dropouts already. So yeah, we tap it. Yes, there's definitely a problem in, in the box, 100%. Not a wiring problem. You know, doing this does nothing. Double check here, here's the control connector. Unless we're stressing pins inside the tip them. But a little tap. What the heck, now it's not doing it. Now we're good. There we go, there's a dropout. Control pins, no dropouts. Okay, that's the output. There, there we go. Okay. 
I want to cause an effect here. Well, I think we're going to tear this tip apart. Well, if you've ever wondered what's inside a tipum, and I have myself, I've never torn one of these apart, you're on the right channel. Here it is. Off the car, on the bench. 